Welcome to my channel on the best of fantasy. This is the week that was. And it has been another wonderful week on the channel. I put out a review of Daniel Abraham's A Betrayal in Winter. That is book two of the Long Price Quartet. I had a magnificent time reading A Betrayal in Winter. Abraham does some absolutely fantastic character work. And in particular, I think his ability to get the reader invested through the relationships between the characters and the conflict within the characters about each other is absolutely top of the game. Abraham is wonderful at this. Uh, he reminds me of Robin Hobb in that respect, and that is something I mentioned in the review. And I also am excited to announce that we have a date and time for the next discussion of the with the group that uh, has been doing the Long Price Quartet together, the Buddy Read, if you will. And we're going to be gathering on Nico's channel, Nico's Book Reviews, on the 23rd. That is a Sunday. It will be a live stream at 1 o'clock Eastern Time. So that is uh, five hours behind Greenwich Mean Time here on the East Coast of the United States at 1 o'clock p.m. Uh, and where, whatever time that is, wherever you might be, I hope that you will be able to join us. I am excited to be discussing A Betrayal in Winter with my friends, with Nico, and with Andrew from Andrew's Wizardly Reads, and Sarah from Sarah Reads, and Zara from Books with Zara, and of course, the long Price prophet, none other than Alan from the Library of Alexandria. So it should be a great time as we discuss A Betrayal in Winter. And I am very invested in this series now. I think that Abraham is going to absolutely... I'm anticipating that I will really enjoy the last two books because I've heard from a lot of fans of the series who most often tell me that book three or book four is their favorite. I've heard from one person who says that book two was their favorite. Most of them hearing books three and four. And if, if books three and four are, are better then books one and two, then this is going to be a really great series. Absolutely. So uh, I'm enjoying it very much. So what else did I do this week? I had a discussion with my excellent buddy, A.P. Canavan from A Critical Dragon. It was part of our archetype series, and we chose to discuss the archetype of the animal companion, which is, I think, a fan favorite when it comes to archetypes in fantasy. It's fair to say a lot of us fantasy lovers are also animal lovers, including myself. So I uh, absolutely loved having that discussion with AP. We got some wonderful comments about people's various favorite uh, animal companions out there. A lot of Night Eyes fan, fans out there looking at you, Robin Hobb. So yeah, we had a, a really nice uh, time discussing all of that. And uh, that, that series we're up to, well, it's technically part 18, although we have only 17 actual episodes, but <laughs> you probably know the story behind that. Uh, so I won't, I won't torture AP by going into detail on it once again. Speaking of the dragon, I also had a discussion with AP on his channel, A Critical Dragon about the perception of time in fantasy and the idea of the golden age that is long lost. And this is one of the reasons that I think I loved fantasy in the first place. It was a very Tolkien-esque thing that I fell in love with, the idea of former times, mythical, the idea that they were somehow more magical, that in our present age, magic has diminished. We are in a diminished time in comparison to the past. It's a very, very common thing in, in myth and in fantasy. It's just all over the place, but it seems to be a very favorite uh, pattern to see. You can see it in A Wheel of Time. You can see it in the Stormlight Archive. You can see it in Wizard of Earth Sea. You can see it in uh, the Broken Earth trilogy. You can see it all over the place. I mean, it's just, it's everywhere broken empire as well. I mean, it's just, it's, it's such a pervasive thing in the genre. You see it in Malazan. You see it all over the place that there are, there were former ages that reached degrees of sophistication beyond our own, whether it be through technology or magic or what have you. And uh, I think we're fascinated by that loss. We're fascinated by the tantalizing glimpses of something that we can almost grasp ourselves, but don't quite understand. 
And that seems to be a very important, uh, important theme in our genre. So it is something that I really enjoy talking about. And that, that was a very cool discussion. Uh, you could check it out on AP's channel, A Critical Dragon. And uh, yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun to discuss. So what am I reading now? Well, let's see here. I am now in the midst of, speaking of molasses, Blood and Bone by Ian Esselmont. This is book five in Novels of the Malazan Empire, and I'm so happy to finally be here. I've been looking forward to this very much after thoroughly enjoying book three, Stone Wielder, and book four, Orb, Scepter, Throne. I really felt that those two books, books three and four in the series, just raised Esselmont's writing to another level. And I loved book one, Night of Knives, and book two, uh, the Return of the Crimson Guard as well. Um, but books three and four really were stellar for me. And so I have high expectations for Blood and Bone, and I am starting to feel myself getting uh, invested in this. It's been a little bit of a slow creep for me so far, but that seems appropriate, seeing as how this has a very uh, mystical jungle setting. So yeah, it's it's been a, a great read so far. In fact, I would go so far as to say that this is reminiscent in some ways of Mirkwood, of Tolkien's Mirkwood. And I know that Steven Erickson has said many times that Tolkien was not particularly an influence for him. He did not read Tolkien when he was young, and therefore Tolkien was probably not an important formative influence for him. But I do think that Ian Esselmont read his Tolkien much earlier, and you can see it in places I do feel like there might be a very subtle uh, homage to Mirkwood in here. It is very subtle. It's a very different type of forest. <laughs> it's more jungle. Think more jungle. Also, Esselmont is, uh, it's well known that he spent time in Southeast Asia and exploring actual jungles there as an archaeologist. So that is certainly a big factor there. That I expected. But I didn't quite expect to see these little nods to Mirkwood, and I'm loving it. So, yeah, spiders and all that sort of thing. So, yeah, <laughs> I, I, th I think I'm, I'm, next time I, if I have an opportunity, and I hope I will, to talk to Ian Esselman, I'm going to ask him about that. Um, but uh, I, I think it's there. I think it's there. So I am an anticipating that I'll continue to really enjoy uh, Blood and Bone. And it's interesting how many fantasy books, I mean, not to be confused with John Gwynn's Of Blood and Bone trilogy, right? So you, you hear the word blood a lot and bone a lot. I think ash comes up a lot in fantasy titles these days as well, doesn't it? A lot of ashes, a lot of blood, a lot of bones in fantasy. <laughs> what is it with that? <laughs> you know, I think it's uh, pretty interesting. Uh, yeah, huh. a lot of lords too, I suppose. But yeah, I guess these are the things that we like to think about when we think about fantasy. That tells you something about our genre, perhaps. After I finish... Blood and Bone, I am going to be reading probably Dust of Dreams, continuing with the Malazan. I'm, we're doing, I'm, I'm going to push to the end of our Malazan reads, so if it's not the next book, it'll be soon after, but uh, it depends on how life pans out for me and for AP, because of course I will be talking about Blood and Bone with AP, as usually doing our usual Malazan drill, where we have the spoiler-free video on my channel and the spoiler one on his. And we'll be doing the same eventually for Dust of Dreams. So I'm not entirely sure, but I'd like to get through all the Malazan stuff a little bit quicker than we have been. We will see, but you know, it depends on life. I myself have been very, very busy lately with my new duties as the department chairperson in the English department where I work. So I find myself with a little bit less time to read, which is unfortunate at the moment, but uh, that is life. Uh, but I am very, very excited to be reading Dust of Dreams once again. This is a reread for me, so I know what's coming, and I am excited about it. Um, so, yeah, uh, and I also will be reading Tolkien's translation of Beowulf. This is something that I am going to be doing along with Mike from Mike's Book Reviews, and we will be having a chat on his channel in February. So I believe that the timing will be correct for me to finish Blood and Bone, finish Dust of Dreams, and then start on this. And Beowulf is, of course, it's a poem I've read more times than I can possibly count. And, and, and I've read it in various translations, but I prefer to read it in Old English. I think it is best read in Old English. But if you can't read Old English, then you might as well 
go to Papa Tolkien's translation, right? Uh, the, the translation I teach is not actually Tolkien's, it is Seamus Haney's, but I think that Tolkien's translation has certain charm, and, and it is, it's a compelling translation. It is a prose translation, uh, and it is uh, somewhat different uh, from other translations uh, in, in respect to Tolkien's ability to, even though it is prose, he is so skilled at reproducing the feel of the Old English verse because of his expertise as a scholar of Anglo-Saxon. So he will have lots to say about that, but uh, it's, it's something I'm very much looking forward to doing along with Mike on his channel. And then I will be reading the third book in the Long Price Quartet. I think that should come next since uh, we'll be doing eventually another discussion uh, with my friends uh, as before. And I guess book three is An Autumn War. Yeah, an autumn war is, and I have the omnibus edition, and so this one includes both books uh, three and autumn war, and book four, the price of spring. So yeah, I'll be reading that, and of course, as I said before, I'm very excited to see how good it is. All right, well, what's good? What else is going on here? I uh, have some exciting collaborations in the works, some that I will be coming up very soon, in fact, and the first of those is going to be talking with Jimmy on the Fantasy Network this Sunday. So tomorrow, uh, as you guys are seeing this, it will be tomorrow, Sunday, the 16th at 3 o'clock Eastern Time. Once again, that is five hours behind Greenwich Mean Time. And this is going to be a discussion on Toll the Hounds, book eight of the Malazan Book of the Fallen. I've been having several of these discussions with Jimmy and some of our friends on the Malazan Books. And I am very excited to get together with Jimmy once again. Uh, he has not yet, as of the moment that I am recording this, he has not yet released a thumbnail for me to share with anyone yet, but I just want to let you know that I will be in this discussion with Jimmy on Sunday at 3 o'clock Eastern Time. So yeah, very excited for that. And uh, let's see, what else am I doing here? Uh, I have some chats lined up with AP next week as well. And one is going to be on magic. So that should be a lot of fun to uh, talk to Professor Fireballs about magic. Maybe I can find out just how he does that fireball spell. And uh, we'll be talking about something else. I don't even know what it is yet, but it's going to be fun, I'm sure. <laughs> so yeah, we have a couple uh, chats lined up. And I will be doing a Malazan chat with Joanna at the end of the month, and I'm very much looking forward to that because I think she has a lot of thoughts having finished the series, and she's done her own video on The Crippled God and has uh, gotten some thoughts out already on the series, but I think there's a lot more to come, and so she's gathering some friends to have that discussion on her channel about the series as a whole. And, of course, the Beowulf discussion that I mentioned, which will be in February with Mike, and I will have been, be having another Molazen discussion with Steve from Steve Talks Books. I was going to get together with him fairly soon just to have a chat, but I think he's been feeling a bit under the weather. So Steve, I hope you are feeling better soon. Uh, but uh, eventually, uh, he's he started the Molazen series as well, and uh, I'm very happy to say that he invited me to join him and a group of friends to talk about Gardens of the Moon. So yeah, I'm, I'm gonna be having lots of these Malazan chats, which makes me extremely happy uh, because I think this is uh, part of the greatest achievement in literature, in my humble opinion. So all the Malazan books together, my very favorite thing. So yeah, uh, so that's all exciting for me and I hope you will be able to catch some of all of these discussions. And uh, some of the, the ones to come in 2022. I'm very excited for this year. I think a lot of great things are going to be happening. But thank you so much for watching this. Until next time.